shall overcome deep in my heart. I do believe we shall overcome. Our forefathers weren't the pilgrims. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. The rock was landed on us. Mercedes Benz, that's foreign policy. As a matter of fact, we came here on a foreign policy. Africa with 400 million black people can do it. If you cannot do it, if you are not prepared to do it, then you will die. And a king who took us to the mountaintop and pointed the way to the promised land. Yes, we can to justice and equality. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Black Villages Report. Today we have the honor of having Councilman of the West Ward, Ronald C. Rice. He's also a candidate for the 10th Congressional District in Essex County. How are you, Councilman? I'm good, Joe. Good to see you. Good seeing you. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to sit down with you and discuss your views on, on the political landscape here in Essex County as well as in New Jersey because the 10th Congressional District also includes Hudson County and uh, also Union County as well, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so uh, you've been serving as councilman for the past two terms, so in, in 2006 you were, uh, was your first term on the North Municipal Council, is that correct? That's correct. Could you tell me some of the things that you've accomplished while councilman of the uh, West Ward for the city of Newark? Absolutely, Joe, it's, it's a pleasure to be here with you and, and to be able to talk to folks about what we've done. And so we came into office in 2006 and we've done some, a lot of things in, in six years uh, that I'm very proud of. Uh, one of the things that I've been able to do legislatively was we passed and I sponsored and passed uh, the toughest ethics laws uh, for any municipality in the state of New Jersey. Uh, laws that uh, restricted pay to play uh, 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 for contractors and developers in the city, established an inspector general's office, uh, forbade uh, campaigning on, on public grounds. Uh, and, and, and making sure there was an open appointments process for our boards and commissions so that average citizens could serve and, and could apply. Uh, I'm very proud that we're the number one city now in terms of passing ethics laws, and I sponsored most of them. Um, we created something in the West Ward called the Westwood Abandoned Property Initiative. And so in the worst economy since the Great Depression, yeah. we're creating jobs here using NSP dollars and other dollars from the state, local, mm -hmm. federal, and, uh, and, and federal government to do what? to uh, uh, rehabilitate abandoned, dilapidated housing in, in the most challenging part of my ward, the Fairmont section. <clears throat> and we're hiring uh, developers from the community, mm -hmm. African-American, Latino developers from the city of Newark, many of which are working on their first homes uh, ever. So that means they're hiring Newarkers. Uh, we're also making sure that we put new playgrounds in. So 13th Avenue School got a new uh, park uh, and, and playground and, and green space. We planted over 250 trees, wow. speed awesome. colony measures around the schools. And so it's not just housing, but we did it in a way so that these houses, when they're back on the tax rolls, are not gentrifying the neighborhood. Right. They can sell for 100 to $150,000 and tenants who've been renters in that community are now homeowners. So I'm very proud of that program. It's just getting bigger and stronger and more powerful as, as we go along. So there's a number of things that I'm very proud of that we've done right here in the ward, uh, but that's probably the hallmark of, of, of my favorite one. And that's certainly excellent. To give them an opportunity to, to purchase uh, property is certainly something that uh, we should all strive for. Absolutely. And, and I know one of the challenges you face is the lack of recreational activity in the uh, West Ward. And, uh, there was a big hue and cry when the Boys and Girls Club closed yeah. down on Littleton Avenue. Uh, what is the status of that building? I'm glad you asked. We, we, we have a couple of options we're looking at, but what I was trying to let the community know and the, and the world at large is, is that the Boys and Girls Club actually owns the building and owns the land. And okay. so when people say, Councilman, what, are you gonna, what can you do? It's privately owned. It's private property. Uh, we've been trying to influence the Boys and Girls Club to bring recreation back there, or at least to sell it to somebody who will bring recreation services. We've been very unsuccessful, I'm, I'm sorry, to say, sorry to say, in doing that. But I will say that we have some bites and some nibbles from a couple of people that I would be proud to support in terms of getting that site. Uh, so we've had a collaboration between myself and the 13th Avenue School and the Urban League in that area that has a strategic plan we've developed for the Fairmont community. You'll see new banners going right. up and down Central and South Orange Avenue talking about a new Fairmont, right. bringing a new vision in. We've got our churches organized in that community now. And we've got uh, a new Westwood Merchant Association that is going to have their kickoff on Littleton Avenue uh, to, to encourage small businesses to be part of that on June okay. 2nd. Okay. Uh, a little quick plug. Um, right. But what are we trying to do? 
We're trying to entice and encourage somebody who will bring recreation there to be interested in that particular site. And I'm proud to say that uh, we've had two nibbles, but the most significant one that I support is Michael K. Williams, an actor from, from Brooklyn who lived in the city of Newark. Most of you know him as Omar from The Wire, okay. uh, who's now on uh, Boardwalk okay. Empire as Chalky White. <laughs> uh, but I'm an admirer of his. Uh, he's an admirer of mine. I was shocked to hear. And, and very humble man. But he's opening up a starting something called uh, Making Kids Win. It's his nonprofit. He's looking to do recreation. I told him about the site. He said, well, I kind of want to do it in Valesburg. I said, no, but I need you to be in Fairmont. <laughs> and so he went there, checked it out, and said, Councilman, I love this location. He wants to bring not only recreation, but he wants to bring the arts. Okay, he wants to bring right. acting and, and drawing and, and, and graphic arts and the whole nine, because that's what saved his life. And so in this particular site, it's going to be about $3 million to renovate it and purchase it. But I'm supporting him, and I'm supporting his effort. Reverend Ron Christian, okay. Christian Love, yeah, right. is on the board along with myself of this. Okay. And I'm, so we're pushing, hopefully, we'll have some good news before the end of the year about that location. Hopefully, we'll say not only that it's, it's recreation, but it'll be arts and crafts, and it'll be by somebody in our community who owns it. And I'm sure the residents there will welcome that uh, to bring more recreation for the youth that are growing up in that area. Absolutely. And, and another, uh, in that almost immediate area, is the old Pax Blue Ribbon. Yeah. And that's a site that's been under um, consideration for a strip mall and, and things of that nature. What is the status of that? We're moving quickly on that site. Uh, um, we we were we had BJ's on the hook to come there, and 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 you know financing fell apart, and so we we have a couple of supermarkets that are thinking about being there. I, what I like to see is a sit down restaurant, right. sort of slash banquet hall. Okay. The war doesn't have that, and I think it would make money because that site is between Irvington. It's in Newark, and East Orange is on the other side, and it's right by on the major thoroughfare that goes into the suburbs and down to downtown Newark on South Orange Avenue, and it's right by the, the parkway entrance uh, exit. So you're talking about a great location that will bring in lots of people, uh, and so we're trying to get developers to be interested. I am proud to say, though, that the county, working with the county and working with the former owners of that location, we were able to, uh, uh, to strengthen and, and lengthen and correct the Grove Street uh, side of it so it's a little bit more straight okay. uh, and doesn't have that weird, contiguous yeah. thing. And we've actually cleared it so that the land, so it, it's ready to be developed now. We've taken a lot of the dirt out and fenced it in and taken care of the rat abatements okay. around the whole place. <laughs> and so it's That's prime good. for that kind of development. Uh, we got to find the right developer because right. I, for me, it has to be about creating jobs for people in the community, uh, uh, of, of making sure we meet the 40% requirement in our city. And I want to see the minority developers working on the site, uh, union or non-union, but I want to see some of us working on the site and making sure that we get done what we need to get done. So. Any kind of catalytic development has to have that kind of part to it, and so I don't care who it is. Uh, I want retail there, but right. I want retail that's going to have a ripple effect right. of employing folks and being part of the construction as well. Well, that's that's phenomenal, particularly that forty percent. Yeah. But when you say the forty percent, would it forty percent Newarkers or forty percent? Uh, forty percent Newarkers. Okay. Uh, we have a uh, legislation that was initially pushed by former uh, councilman Donald Tucker. And, and, and pushed by Mayor Booker uh, when he was a council person that requires uh, uh, businesses to consider uh, uh, Newarkers and to, and to okay. push to have a 40% uh, employment of it uh, where possible. Okay. And that's, uh, we can't force anyone, right. quarters are illegal, <laughs> but that's, that's, the, that's the goal. Yeah, and, and I know of concern has been crime in the city of yeah. Newark. Uh, how has crime impacted this ward, if at all, uh, during your tenure on the uh, municipal council? Well, I'm glad you said that. It's it's really been the best of 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 of, of you know the best of times and the worst of times. We came into office before we were in office. There were over 106 murders uh, in 2006. Uh, we got it down as low as 80 uh, in 2008. We led the nation in violent crime reduction in the city of Newark, uh, and, and I was very proud of that fact. Since then, though, we've seen an uptick. Uh, we've had uh, the officers laid off um, because of budget problems. Uh, we've had um, just, a, I, I think, in my opinion, just not enough resources in order to fight back the way we need to. And so even in that rain, though, in the West Ward, uh, we got our precinct open on Irvington okay. Avenue. Uh, I made a com I got a commitment from uh, Mr. DeMeo, uh, our, our, our new uh, uh, police director, and, and Sheila Coley, our new uh, chief of police, uh, first African-American woman to hold right. that seat. Oh, yes. uh, and he, he promised me that he would make So it's open 16 hours a day. 
Uh, we have a number of units that flow out of there. Literally every unit for the 4th Precinct comes down from through, through Valesburg and okay. through down the West Wall, which okay. provides some more. And I'm proud to say that we have a mini precinct that will be opening up soon on the corner of Columbia and South Orange Avenue. Okay. Of course, even where the old mini precinct used to be, we couldn't get that one open because the building was condemnable. Uh, but we are now using a, a storefront on that corner. Uh, uh, that we worked at with Dwight Willis, who is now who's a, a community uh, uh, owner and, and business uh, uh, leader in our community. We'll be using that, and then we'll find dollars for the old mini precinct to rehabilitate that, working with Babyland, okay, and right, it will yeah. be uh, a, a community center of sorts okay, uh, okay. that we we'll hopefully will put the mini precinct back into, right. but it'll be also be a community center, uh, and we're going to be naming that along with Babyland, because they own it, Babyland owns the structure, the Senator Ronald L. Rice uh, okay. uh, a community center uh, as, as a fitting tribute to, to my father, State Senator Rice. Oh, and, and that's a good segue. You, you grew up in a household where your father has been a longtime politician, right. and he's formerly the uh, West Ward Councilman. Right. And then in 1986, he was uh, uh, elected to the New Jersey State Senate That's and right. has served there ever since. What influence, if any, has he been on your life in terms of entering into politics? Right. Well, my, my dad is, is my inspiration for, for that. And, and it simply put is, is politicians get a bad rap. You know, they're politicians. And I tell people all the time, my dad is a public servant. And he showed me by his personal example that you could serve an elected office, you could work in government, uh, and it'd be an honorable profession. That it was an honorable way to spend your life, it was an honorable way to give back to your community if you did it the right way. And so I saw a father who didn't try to get rich uh, off, off, off the public dole. Uh, he was always a simple man, and so I took a $14,000 pay cut to be a full-time councilman um, and to, to, to my own economic distress and detriment because I believe that that's what my constituents needed was a full-time council and person. you worked at the state at the time. I was, I, exactly, I was a spokesperson at the New Jersey Department of Education. And so I left a very lucrative job to, to be a full-time councilman. Um, I don't drive a city car in my role as council person. Um, I try to live the life that my constituents live. I have trouble paying bills too. I got law school loans I'm paying back and, and I've taken a payday loan or two in order to get through the day. Uh, but but that's the, those are the issues that real people deal with. My father, um, like I said, has always been above reproach and always did what he thought was right for people. Whether I agree with it or not, all of what he's done in his life is by, is by his honest held belief of what's right for people. And I think that's what's best about public service. And right. so, so in the time I was 10 years old, I've worked in every campaign <laughs> he's done. And, and I was his West Wall coordinator. He ran for mayor in 98 right. uh, unsuccessfully. Yeah. Um, but, but he's the reason why I'm in this business. And I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I couldn't pick a better model. I couldn't pick a better father in terms of being a personal example of what you should be in government. Well, that's certainly heartwarming because there's oftentimes people say that you're at odds with your I father. Know. So it's certainly good to hear that you had a very wholesome and, and a good, uh, healthy relationship with your father. Absolutely. Um, a few months ago, the state was shocked and saddened by the death of Congressman Donald Payne, longtime congressman in the 10th Congressional District. Right. And uh, as a result, there's been a number of people to come forward to say, I want to now pick up the mantra and I want to be your elected servant for the uh, 10th Congressional District. And you just just happen to be one of those individuals Absolutely. and uh, I've known you for a while and I know that that's been your passion for a long time but why would you want to be the congressional uh, person now and uh, not stay here in the city of Newark right. what's driving you to become uh, the next 10th congressional district uh, uh, congressman well I think three reasons one is I'm qualified to do the job right now uh, and right here uh, this, the second thing reason is is that I think my record of what I've been able to do as a councilman uh, is indicative of what I want to take to Washington in terms of the issues I fought for. And the last reason is because I'm a Democrat's Democrat. Uh, I'm somebody that has, is a, a died in a wool Democrat to the point of I will, I will support my party to the hilt when it's right and then I'll fight it when it's wrong and I've done that as a council person. So I, I'm qualified for the first reason mainly because uh, I went to school at American University, got my degree in political science and public administration. I interned on Capitol Hill, so I know Washington, D.C. very well from a policy standpoint. Uh, I'm somebody that came back to New Jersey and got my, uh, got my law degree from Seton Hall, and so I understand the law and I understand policy when it comes to that matter. I've worked in policy all my life. I was the, the chief uh, writer uh, and, and author of the initial regulations for the Abbey B. Burke decision, wow. okay. which brought you know, millions of dollars to 31 special need districts, new construction dollars. It, it remains the hallmark of, 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 of 
my, my career, even before I was in elected office. And as a city council person, uh, I've done those kind of things that I mentioned before, but I've also created the LGBTIQ Commission for the city of Newark. I created the- And that's what? I'm sorry, Lesbian, Gay, uh, Transgendered uh, Organization um, um, uh, for gay and lesbian uh, folks who have been locked out of government now have a 